a little while ago, I revisited a plot that I'd been to previously, about 18 months, two years ago. At the time, it was to Neil Hans, who I still think holds the world record for the heaviest red cabbage. However, on this occasion, I was visiting another YouTube fellow grower, who is Chris Evans, and he's got some nice shell veg, although he hasn't had a few issues. So why not pop along with me and see what's been happening? First of all, Chris, many thanks for inviting me down to your allotment site. Yeah, no problem at all. And no, uh, hopefully we can share with the viewers a quick look around to what's happening this year. Yeah, disaster. So, disaster? <laughs> yeah. Never. Um, so what's this greenhouse we're in at the moment? This, at the moment, it's, uh, it's where I grow the giant tomatoes for Malvern for the heavy, heavyweight championships. And, and uh, everything okay with these? At the moment, we've got some decent ones. We've got a couple what's going a bit manky, but uh, hopefully we might have one or two, maybe get the bench. There, as you can see. Oh, that's a nice place, yeah. Hopefully they'll make it to more one. And when, when, what sort of time of year would you be sowing the seeds for these to, for germination? Uh, ooh, May. First, the second week in May. You can possibly do the third week for later sowing. Yeah. Because it depends on what what sort of year you get. If it's a cooler year, it takes longer. Yeah. But if it's a warm year, obviously they, they'll grow quicker. Because... And would you start these off with heat, lights or whatever? No, you don't need no lights, no no heat. I mean, you're in May time. Especially here in the Midlands, you, yeah. you wouldn't need that sort of... Um, structure yeah maybe up north depends on how, how they're getting on up there to get it still cold they can still have cold till june they might probably have a a bit of eating light but an average general rule no so we got what about 10 plants in here uh eight eight plants and how many seeds would you set down for that uh possibly 30 yeah blind me and and then you it's when when you're ready to pot on, is that when you thin them out, or do you keep potting? If on? all thirty come up, I pot all thirty up. Right. Even well, though I only want eight plants. And what stage do you thin them out to the? the Each time I pot up. Yeah. So they'll probably go into a one liter if I, you know, from the three inch yeah. into a one liter, and then you cut that dramatically down. So once I go into the one liter, out of thirty plants, I'll go to ten. And have you got? Is there a secret? blender compost you use or anything special or whatever else over the years i've tried everything yeah but um have you getting on now with this compost with like the obviously peat trees coming in and and it's cut the well at the moment i've still been using peat professional compost either clover or vitex yeah i haven't used any of the non-peat based compost when it comes into action i don't really know what i'm going to do so uh, next, next year is going to be a tester for the lot of garden, isn't it? It is. Oh. In what way, I don't know. Right then, this is the tomato now, so let's pop next door and see what we've got growing in there. Oh, it, as I've been saying, we're in for a disaster year. This is the one of the funnels you got to ask what we've got in there. Oh, blimey. me. Right. Yeah. We've got some good leaks, but at the moment, it's a. Uh, a fungus that's at the moment it's known up north is called stemphilium. Stemphilium, right. I'm not, sometimes I'm not familiar with that, is it? Now, if you look stemphilium up, it's um, it's a bit like rust. Yeah. It's airborne. And as you can see, once it gets on your legs, it makes them look horrible. But it looks, it, it devastates them. And for showing, it's a big no-no. I mean, you've got some really big specimens in here. Are you still going to put them in the show? Or? I'll still put them in the show because uh, it makes the bench up. Yeah. In our show. So, uh, as do you know if this, this disease has gone round to other areas or something? Say it's, it's new to me. I've never heard of it. As far as I know, this is about here oh, where right. I am. Um, Have you got any other big growers on site here? At Leaks, no. Yeah, we have got Bob Carr. And has uh, he had any issues with this? No, he ain't got none, and he's had the stock some stock from me. Uh, Neil, he's got it very little. He had a bit of stock with me, but some of the lads in the league club have had their stock, all their stock off me, and they had it at all. <laughs> but the trouble is, when you have things from up north, you bought some of it down here. Yeah. 
Now, you don't know if that's the case, but John Salisbury, he said, once it's in your area, it's hard to get rid of. No, it's a bit like allium leaf mine. <laughs> it is. At the moment, I, I get away with allium leaf mine. I, I do, we do have it. Yeah. But with the extra protection of netting I put round, I, I, the one year I did have it, it decimated them. I yeah. stripped eight flags off. I got rid of it all. I sprayed. They grew again, and I managed to win my leak show. So <laughs> I, I, got, I got through it. I was prepared that day to rip the whole lot out. So, you know, when you rip the flags down, yeah. does that alter the height of the button? Is that right. When you're showing pot leaks, yeah. especially for the National Pot Leak Society rules, it can't be a little millimetre or even a little smidgen over six inches I'll yeah. throw it under. Right. right. It has to be anything under six. So, it's like here, you, you take the old flags off, right, and you strip them down, and you strip that right down, but here's the button where my finger is. Yeah. On, right there. Yeah. Now, it has to be sound. But if that goes over six inches, I'm now good to show. Right. So, so what effect does removing the leaves, it raises the height of the button? Does it? it can do. Sometimes it drops back down. Yeah. But you have to remove the flags, obviously, because that's where you get the coarseness. Okay. By removing flags, you're still out the roots. They still produce roots, but it depends on what time it is. It can take a long time to get that root mass to take the coarseness out from the bottom of the leaf. Yeah. That's where the root plate is. But like I say, this year we've had a bit of a disaster, but we're looking forward and, to and when would How would you start these off, Chris? Uh, pips, seeds? I'm called grass. Grass. And pips. Yeah. The pips are like little uh, little onion bulbies. Yeah. Grass is obviously like a piece of grass. It's a baby leak already started. If you grow from seed, you won't get the parent plant. You get some of the genetics, but you get anything. Okay. Where I'm growing from grass, I get the same parent. So you're just keeping the strain the same. Yeah. Yeah. You're keeping... If that fit, if it grew like this with no problems, like we normally would have, you get that same leak again, but you might get an improvement. So when when would you plant in the pips then? For these? Anything from the end of September onwards. Yeah. So these were started in the first week of October. So obviously you've got to overwinter these. Yeah, you have a, overwinter them in an heated greenhouse. So what was your minimum temperature you'd have these at? The lowest to be eight. Blimey. Eight degrees. That's a uh, forty-eight Fahrenheit. That's it's a fair temperature to maintain, especially when you've got no gas or anything. To it. it is, but and I have to use a, a gas heater. Yeah, a, a, like a bottle gas, is that? Yeah, yeah, bottle gas. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if I was in the back garden, I had to use electric. Yeah, or, or mains gas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tap into next doors probably, but you know, but that's what we have to do. And it it depends on what sort of hobbies you got. If it, it's your hobby, yeah. You, and you're willing to do it. Yeah. That's what. That's the requirement. It don't matter what hobby you take up, it's going to be an expensive one. Yeah. Take up golf. You can pay three hundred pound for a golf club, for one. So, you do it because you enjoy it. Yeah. Looking at these beds, Chris, from a fair distance, what's these like? Twelve foot is it or something? Twenty foot long. Twenty foot long. Yeah. And so there's a fair bit of compost in there. How long do you keep this compost in? How many years? And, and how do you it revitalize it? It stays in. So do you have to revitalize it? Yeah, so it, it's a, it's 20 foot long by two and a half foot wide. So all this, I take a section out, like we say here, but this is at the start of the trench. I take this section out, I'd put it in pots or in the wheelbarrow, or chuck it on the floor, and I work it all forward. So I'm bringing the bottom. So you're moving it? Up. So you're moving it forward, right? Then you got once you've done it all. The question is, do you sterilise it or not? In this case, I will sterilise next year. Now you can either use bleach, Jay's fluid, Jay's fluid, or Milotox if you have any, yeah, or one or two things if you can get your hands on it. Now. If you sterilise, you do kill all the good stuff in your soil. Yeah. The worms, the lot. Yeah. I used to do it in the past and never used to have a problem, even if you don't have worms in. It's like good leaks. 
But like I say, you choose whether you want to sterilise or not. I've had, I've had a problem, I will do it. See how next year comes on. But once I've dug all this trench out, obviously it comes like a grave. A mound. Right. I will level it out and then get some of my compost that I've made myself. And I'll put a bucket or two per the square yard. Or per the section. Because where the scaffolding poles are, there's a section. Yeah. And I'll put one or two buckets. And I'll dig that into the top layer. By the time I come to plant out, I've dug this over one to two twice to keep it moving. And I, I will keep it well watered as well to keep it Talking right. Talk to water now, do you water? Right. I can... There used to be a pipe called Weaver Plow. This is the next version to it. Right, so you get this from... It used to be called Sherrod Lawn Care. And they use them on football pitches. Now, you don't get no water from this top. As little holes you call seam, it's impossible. And as it sprays out sidewards. So when this water comes out, it'll water this way, that way, and there. Okay. Right, and these are mine for half hour of time from the main tap. Unless you want to put a barrel system up in the air and gravity feed them, you can do that no problem at all. And is that something you do every day or every couple of days or what? Uh, uh, more, you? Two to three times a week. Okay. If it's hot, three times a week. If it's even, twice. Twice a week. And how do you get on, like, once you, you plant them in there, what, what height would the leeks be when you put them into the border? Right. Um, the leek, on average, would be, here's your pot. That's a five-litre pot I use. Yeah. And it's deep. It's about that big. Your leek on top will be about that old. Now, I dig myself an hole. This way a leak was. So you make your square. As you can see, this bed's still damp and I ain't watered it for the last three months. Right? It's still damp. But what happens when it rains, the water from the outside, the trench soaks it upwards. Okay, like a capillary. Yeah. As you can see, this is still wet. Right? So I've dug my hole now for the leak. You put the leak in. Now you can either bury it a bit or leave the leak on top. I like to leave the leak on top. So, as you can see here, this leak is sitting on the top. Now, it's because this leak is a Yorkshire blue and it can tend to go over six inches. So, you try and keep it on the top to try and keep the length down. Now, if you was growing the cumbering, you'd bury it a bit more. Okay. So, obviously, I've, I've, dug, I've dug all my holes. Now, I'd put eight to ten in. And then when I've got my leak, tap it out, straight in the hole. But the hole is quite bigger than the leak, the pot itself. And then I'll give it a good 10 litres of water, right, to give it a really good soaking. Right, obviously then you backfill it. Is that like just plain water or would you have a leak no, in there? No, just plain water, right. Because all your feed is in the trench, okay. all my fertiliser and everything. Sometimes I haven't tested. But normally I just have general maintenance because I'm pretty much on top of it anyway. General maintenance, a bit of this, a bit of that, whatever the, the test says. So I've firmed it all in now. I've given it that 10 litres of water, good soaking around the roots. And I'll leave these pipes on for half an hour to an hour. These don't, more, these don't see no more water for two weeks. Okay. Because you want the roots to go out and down. They've got to look for water then. Then from them two weeks from that day, I then carry on my water program. Like I said, twice to three times a week, depending on the weather. But other than that, they don't get no feed. They just get water. And, and now, say you was going to a show. Yeah. How soon do you lift that prior to the show? Is the it morning. The, on the same, the morning. So the same day as the stage in the benching, yeah? So when it comes to our league show, which is where two weeks time at the morning of that show i might get up at it's light about a hour i think i might get up a power over here for half past i only live over the road so that's my advantage all right so i get over here and I'll, I'll look at the leaks i've normally got all these marked up for the ones i want yeah i've already looked up days before and i'll dig the leaks out i'll have a table outside i was just all the crap off 
and then that'll take me so it's normally two three normally about four sets of pot leeks blanche leeks as well onions i dressed the lot in that morning and what so what you're talking about two or three hours maybe more yeah right and when i'm doing the bigger shows and washing carrots i've spent six hours watching carrots right so that's dedicated man. and then after i'll go and get the bath took everything out of the bath like the clothes or so whatever you put in fill it up with water and i'll put the carrots in to soak overnight that's to keep them fresh now to keep these fresh even though i've dug them up like everything starts to wilt quickly yeah so i'll get some damp damp towel whatever give that a good soaking and put it around the barrel on the roots then i'll put them in a black bag to keep the moisture okay so when them there you must try and keep your leeks as fresh as possible or your carrots as fresh as possible whatever you're showing where onions you don't need to do that but certain vegetables root veg these sort so of ideally things. you want to bench them at the very last minute do you? yeah as you... possible yeah well right then thanks for looking in here chris we'll go and have a look at what surprises you got for us next door all right these i'm off neil neil and his world record red cabbage yeah i think it was 70 pound in weight i can't remember what year but it was in covid yeah we went all the way to mansfield it was the only show on that year and medwin put it on with canna in mansfield and we traveled all the way to mansfield and i says to neil i said i think you've brought the world record there and we got all the way to mansfield obviously i wore people about a couple of the show lads but we were far apart as we were supposed to be and it weighed in and it's 70 pounds and ever since he's kept his own seed but this year i don't normally bother with them but i thought i'll have a go <clears throat> he gave me some seed i tried one different cabbage we, we was going to try and cross it try and make these bigger but it failed but these are the two i only want one anyway but these are the outcome and i'm looking good if the heads continue we could be close and I anything, anything will. special you've done with these chris at all or well as you can see i put them in tires yeah the reason for the tires is to hold the foliage up out the bottom okay otherwise you'd have the leaves on the floor and as you notice i've got membrane down the reason is for that one it stops the weeds and two you don't get many slugs either right because the leaves are touching the dirt so the leaves last longer every leaf on this counts the hardest part is getting it out because every leaf i crack i'm losing weight oh yeah, yeah. obviously obviously it could break off so as you can see we've got some couple of nice cabbages but like i say the hardest part's getting them out we're going to figure a different system next year but in there because they're these tires when i got them free <laughs> i bought the lorry frigging wheels i think Look like and, look like Formula One tires. <laughs> <laughs> Hamilton get it me, but don't tell anybody, right? <laughs> but I don't realise how much soil I'd have to build up a bit. So obviously it's a soil off my allotment because I've cut the ring out the bottom and it's right into my allotment ground. But I have built it up a bit. I've used my own rotted compost, which is twelve months old, and I use bloodfish and bone and grow more mixed together and that gives me an mpk i think i said it was a 12 12 13 yep. on an average because blood fish and bones all grow more than even ratio seven, seven grow yeah. More usually, yeah and blood fish and bone, i think it's six six five or yep. something like that so overall it gives me an higher ratio but a blood fish and bone goes quicker where grow more lasts over the season so that's what I did, mixed up with some yarn, mixed it all in, and then plant the cabbage in. And it's all it's had is since, is water, no feed, the odd spray with neem oil. Yeah. As you can see, I ain't touched these for a long time, and got no white fly. And w when would you put the um, seed in for these? When would you set them? First of December. For the cab giant vine, yeah. Again, that would be in the heat. They started off in the heated greenhouse, and then I grew them cold. Yeah, because the brassicas tend not to like of too much heat right they? now these was purple when i planted these out <laughs> and now purple shows you a sign of cold 
in yeah. cabbages, in brassicas. I thought eh, we are all going to get nothing because you're supposed to keep these. These are supposed to be this colour when you planted there. These was jet purple. They had a really bad cold check. I grew them cold because I had no space in the heated greenhouse because my pot leeks and blanched leeks and onions come first. These was blue, right? So they had a real cold check. We planted them out, they were very small. But over the season, they coloured up into the normal colour. So and to me... All, all garden, well, all gardens I know in the Midlands, we've encountered some horrendous heat, hot days, and also tremendous rain the last few months. Uh, have you had to do anything special with these? or uh, No, cabbages love rain. You call beat nothing what comes out the sky. Yeah. But the heat, I don't even I think I've seen them flop or nothing. Mm -hmm. But they love rain. These I had no feed whatsoever apart from what I've just told you in there. So is it is it staging for more than on the Thursday or Wednesday? It'd be Thursday. So what, will you lift these when? On the Wednesday? No, on the morning. <laughs> yeah. Before I go to Malvern. Because these are wilt. Yeah. And don't forget, when things start wilting, it starts losing weight. So what, do you put, get an old bed sheet or something? Well, that's the in? plan normally. I just carry it. You normally... You've got to lift that, eh? <laughs> well, I normally, the muggings here, normally do all the lifting. I normally cut the roots off at the bottom, turn it upside down and hold it from the the stump. What, what's the rule in, obviously you're going for a heavy weight, is, is yeah. the, what's the rule in, because obviously the root can weigh, is there something like You've a, got to cut it down to three inches. Three inches from the bottom. But base. I don't cut it until I get to move them. Because oh, yeah, it, gives me, moisture, it yeah. gives me summer to hold on to as well, to yeah. carry it down there straight yeah. into the van. And I'll put it on the van upside down. Okay. Because it's then sitting on the head. Yeah. On the hardest part, yeah. and then I'll light slowly onto its side. Okay. What well, we made, Chris, on that you mentioned already about the compost bins. Can we have a quick look at these and, yeah. and see what you've got going on <coughs> there? Right. Last week, this was in there. So it's a long bin, this is it? It's, it's uh, my allotment's uh, 24 foot wide. Okay. Right. This is near enough about that. So what we're going now there. this is what we do here. We start off, I put, normally I fill this up with straw or whatever os manure we get from the riding stables. We get it for free, we have it dumped up the top and I'll bring down, normally I'll, I'll fill this up to about here, but I don't like the hay what's in it, it takes too long to rot down. So I like the strawberry stuff or the sawdust, whatever. And I'll normally fill that to about there and then start chucking all my green stuff on. So, I've got grass cuttings a cup from home, pigeon manure from home, because we've got pigeons as well, and then I've chucked in celery, you name it. What, I, what I've done, grass, grass clippings, you name it, I chuck it on. The weeds as well. Have you gone with on. the pigeon manure, Chris? Because that can be quite a bit hot and strong, can it? Never put pigeon manure straight on your lot, man, because... It's it's very strong. It's yeah. the strongest I know. So you've got to put it in your compost, lay it rot down, and then it'll mellow a bit. So how long would you leave this before you actually use it? Well, like I say, that's 12 months down there, so that's I'd leave it to that. So you you move along like from one bay to the next? Every six months this, this will move. So within six months, I'll fill this up, whether it's green stuff or manure itself. Obviously, the top's still fresh. You know what you've been putting on. I put all the weeds in, even mare's tail. Yeah. I'll even chuck mare's tail. Do you turn this at all? No. It all just stays on. I'll tread it down yeah. to compact it because obviously your core keep putting on because it'll fall off. Well, you get all the air out as well. Right. Obviously. And I compact it down, I jump on it. Right. All the edge here goes on here, jump on it just to keep it so it don't keep coming out. And then in six months' time, which is about June normally. The top's still fresh because I'm still chucking it on all the time. Obviously, that top goes to that bottom. Right. Right? And all this bottom then, and all in the middle, will be ready. So that goes on the top. So that... All what's fresh is underneath there. But in six months' time, that'll be like that. 
So how old is this in here now? Six months. I mean, that looks quite good, that bit. That's six months. Right, so whatever's fresh I've chucked on top will be like this in six months at the bottom. Right, in 12 months, normally I might have this bay empty because it goes on my allotment, leak trenches, yo name it, compost mixes. Now it's going to, obviously this is dry on top, but down underneath, it's just like compost. Yeah, it's dry, isn't it? Right. Now, that's 12 months old. Do you use that for potting or just top dressing? I do mix it in with the compost sometimes. Depends on what things. Sometimes I do trials. I have gone neat into it and it's been okay. Um, I've mixed it with other compost. But what it boils down to, your peat situation again, is that you will have to use some, you'll have to buy the best of the non, non peat, whatever that is. I don't know at the moment. And then you'll have to mix your own compost. You'll have to make it yourself, whether it's leaf mould or anything, your own compost, and you're going to have to mix it with it to make that better. And also, you're going to have to add fertiliser. Yeah. The thing what's making peat crap, non-peat non crap, is a lack of feed. The moisture content, don't forget there's nothing in peat at all. Do you ever use anything like coir or anything like that? I oh, yeah, use that. The only trouble is with coir, you've got to feed every time you water. Now, that's the same situation as peat. There's nothing in coir, that's where you've got to feed it. There's nothing in peat, but it holds water. It makes a very fine compost. Now, peat, obviously, is just garden crap, right? Wood fibre and garden crap. But there's, there's not enough nutrients to keep the plants going. There's nothing to retain the moisture. That's where your peat plays a part. So you're saying that the peat tree has got nothing in it really at all? No, not nothing. You might get a fortnight out of it. Yeah. But by adding your own compost, you've got lumps in. Yeah. Like Mick Partnell say, you've got lumps in what will hold that water. I ain't saying you're going to have 100% goodness because there's nothing in it. This will only make your comp uh, compost allotment more better. Yeah. It'll make it like your peat substitute. Do you ever cover this from the elements like this? No. No, so this is open all the time. Oh, as you can see, you will lose nitrogen. It's like that. That's now good now. You'll put that or you'll put it in your pots. The water wouldn't just roll through it yeah. because it's dried. But obviously underneath, as you can see, it's moist and that's what it's like all the time. It'll only be the surface crust where it'll dry out. If you covered it, you are going to get no rain to it and it'll yeah. still dry out anyway. Oh, right then. Let's have a look what else we've got on the side. Right, we've got some big sunflowers. Uh, I grow these for the largest sheds for my uh, two sons and daughter, and they enter the class at Malvern. Um, it's the largest sunflower red. Well, I'm hoping it will be. The variety's Titan. Normally, I just have them off a couple of growers who, who grow, grow large sunflower reds, but the last you normally want to use is Mongolian giant. Okay. That's normally known for its large heads. But this year we're using Titan and the leaves and Yeah. Nice. But I'll feel have a nice head for me uh for my kids. These are the long runner beans, I want thinning. But we've got some starting to get some decent ones. As you can see, starting to get some decent Will you be putting any of these in the show at all? Hopefully, yeah, yeah. There's nothing else can go wrong. <laughs> so is is yeah. most of the stuff you got on your plot show stuff rather than everything for show. Nothing for eating. No, uh, my dad he's got everything for the table. Okay, right. It, everything what I grow is either for seed or stock to produce all my own stuff. Yeah. Or we do eat some of it if I'm short or something. I mean. Last year I had tomatoes up till Christmas Day, you know, I left them in. Right. Uh, carrots, we'll keep them, but most of it I'll give them to the old ones in the road or That's nice, yeah. soup kitchens or so them I, sort of places. I mentioned at the earlier, right, the intro, I think it was of the video, that uh, that you do both quality veg and the giant stuff. Yeah. Well, is the one more difficult than the other, do you think? Or? They're both as hard as each other. The yeah. only thing is... With a quality veg, you want perfection. You want it as clean as possible, 
and perfect. Now, when you show a tomato, it's got to be they they average say it's got to go through a 65 mil ring. That's as big as you want it. You don't know blemishes on it. You want a perfect round shape and a, a nice red colour but firm. Nice dark red but firm. Now, if you had a slightly orange, they no good. Where on a giant veg, you don't care what it looks like. It can be as ugly as anything. It's all you want is weight or length. Yeah. It can be the ugliest carrot you have ever seen. It can have more legs than an octopus. But every leg is at weight in that case, or the length. Yeah. Like everything we grow, most especially with the show stuff, we've only got one crack at it, have we? Yeah, so one crack a year. What sorts of disappointments you had? You said you had a bad year this year, didn't you? It, I'll tell you the truth. It all started off with the long back cattle, uh, long carrots. I moved seven ton of sand in and out. Well, I think you put your video up about this, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. If you haven't I'm, seen it already, I'll put a link to Chris's channel at the bottom and also a link to this video because I do remember watching it. I moved seven ton in and out. Now, you think that's all? Why do that? Because the sand goes like concrete, so you have to loosen it up. It makes it easier for the bore in the holes and so and so, as you can see on my video. It took me ages to do it. Seven ton with a bucket and spade. Right, you can do it easier options, you know, I suppose, but that's just the way I do it. Plus, it's good exercise. But anyway, I've done all that. It come to the season. I had a packet of carrot seed brought it from the company's company. Now, I'll name the company, just to be fair. I put five seeds in the station as 40 stations in eight barrels, and not one carrot come up. Wow. I had another seed. Brand new, wanted to come on the market. 120 stations, same compost, same mix, nothing's changed. These are some stump carrots. New stump carrot, come on, I think it's called Gladys. Something like that. Five seeds per station, 120 stations. Every single seed germinated in all 120 stations. The same compost, you say? Same compost. Every five seeds in Every 120 station, you can work out that number yourself. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> right? And they all come up. And I thinned them all out. And I've got 120 carrots. So that's that's really disappointing. Now. I'm disappointing. Right. So I had a, after that, I got very disheartened. And I just said, if it would have been my fault, I'd have, like, I'd have done something wrong or whatever, I'd have carried on. But you might say, oh, it, it's just carrot seed or... You can grow everything else well. Yeah, go on, Ed. So I aim to grow everything well, even though it's impossible. Yeah. And that year's gone. All that effort's gone. Time and money's gone. Just down to having a poor packet of germination on a carrot seed. And after that, I just said, yeah. stuff it. And I just let my allotment go. And I let the weeds grow. And that's all I've been doing all year is weeding. And all the rest of it stuff. So has that, has that made you more determined for next year now? Next year, well, happen again, put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> I will get back to that state. I will let it happen. Right, let's move on and have a look what else we got to show. Right. So as well as his successes, Chris has kindly offered to show us the failures and it's the callous we was on about. And right. Uh, as you can see, there's eight empty barrels. I'll just put these. Eight empty barrels, as you can see, no carrots. You can still see the stations where they was left. Like I say, after that, I just left everything. As you can see, the state of the tunnel. Normally, if you was filming me, you'd have you'd see some quality stuff, and that's not blowing me own trumpet. You would see some quality stuff. I, I say it's winning stuff, but it'd be quality stuff. Yeah. I mean, as you can see, I've just let the tomatoes flop over. Normally, I've got 10 trusses to the roof and them stopped. All the side shoots have taken out everything. As you can see, all the common cucumbers, I just, I've just left it. And that's just be, you'd lost art over what's happened with it. I just lost art in that part. Normally, I just let it slide, but for some reason this year, it, it got to me. And well, as you say, you've put a lot of work in, obviously, preparing the barrels and, the, say, digging all that sand in and out and... Uh, well, you can see the result. It's the same compost. Something to go not out of your control is 
So these are the carrots in the same compost, a different brand of carrot is these. Yeah, it's just a brand new one what's come onto the market. Now, when you're growing long carrots, you call buy these from a, a DT brand or whatever because it's a specialised, reselected strain called New Red Intermediate. It used to come off a carrot called St. Valerie, I think it was. Yeah. Right, and over the years, they've reselected it. So, not a normal seed company. It's a normal seed company, but it's mainly for exhibition. Yeah. If you went to DT Brand, you couldn't buy that long carrot seed. This, you can't. If it's a new one on the market, you might see it in a couple of years' time. Most of the seed catalogues will have it. But, this is what you get on fresh seed. That couldn't have been fresh seed. It w it'd be impossible. I mean, 120 carrots here in 120 stations. Five seeds are put in per station. Five seeds come out. You can wet the maps out yourself. I'm no and, good. And, and was yeah, these sown similar time? These were sown earlier. We had decent weather at the time in April. These are sown towards the end of April. I've got the date in my book. So but these are stump as well, are they? These are stump. All these two beds are stumps. Yeah. These were sown a bit later, but we still had the same conditions. They were still sown in the same conditions. I re sowed these twice. These were sown at the same time as them, and it's the same outcome, same atmosphere. You can just have a, have a look around there. Can you see any, the tops of anything? Look, there's one. Just have a little go down in here and do it. I'll try and cover one, but it's very easy. No, don't, don't spoil the ball. I mean, that must be like, I don't know, 40 millimetre diameter, 50 millimetre diameter, even to a decent size. That carrot's there. That's as far as wide as that. <laughs> but whether it's any good underneath or it's got octopus legs, yeah, I don't know. But I should get a set out of 120. I've got a three. So how many, how many will you be showing? How many shows you doing for these? These I'm just for one show. So you only want three carrots out of 120 yeah. carrots? Normally I do two or three shows because I got the quantity of veg what I normally put in the shows. Yeah. Normally I put about 10 to 15 things per show. Yeah. But obviously I got that this year because I've had a bad year. So I've just... Malvern's my big one. And it's in the MBS Midland Branch Championships. And I've won it once before. And hopefully we might get some out of here. I sound a win, but as long as I get in the top half, I ain't bothered. Yeah. But for 120, I want three. But I will be shown on the town side as well, so I'll make a set up whatever's left. I want some sets out of 120, but if I can get three belters out uh, of 120. I mean, you prepared to lift all these to get three good ones? Right, to the morning, it's just on the Thursday, ain't it? So I'll get up four, come over about half past. I have got a lot to prepare this year, so I'm, I'm, I should be better. But I'll trim all this off. I trim it off. Because you've got to leave three inches. Talk. Right, so I'll, I'll cut. I'll just cut it off so I can see. <laughs> right? I cut all the forest down. I whack it in the compost. And I'll start pulling. I'll pull every single carrot. All 120 will be pulled that day. To get three. Because I got to, I want three matching the, the same. Or as close as possible. But like I said, really I want six. But I want three belters if I can. And I'll pull all 120 up. Once I've got them, all the rest, I'll push back in the holes to keep them. That'll store, will they? Okay. Well, they'll, they'll store for, for what I want. Yeah. And then afterwards, like I say, I'll give them away or, or freeze them, whatever you want. But that's what I'll do. All 120 will be pulled for that show. Wow. Normally, when I'm doing three or four shows, I'll pull half a bed. For each show. Okay, yeah. So I've got as a. So. As 120, that's 78. Yeah. So I'll pull 45 yeah. for one show. If I can get three out of that one show, if I don't, I don't pull no more. Alright. So four bit, you know, four sections for, four, for whatever shows I'm doing. So looking up here, these tomatoes, Chris, you've got a, a fair decent size. On there. What, what are these? These are Maisie. It's a show tomato. 
But I mean, obviously you can use it for anything. But it's a show to Marta because it's got a nice round shape, as you can see. Oh, so it's got a nice round shape, as you can see on that. It's got no defaults apart from a few marks. But forget that. That's got a nice round shape, nice colour. And when you've got to have six or nine, and they all look like that, you've got a winning set. Okay. Now, the downside, what I was saying on the quality bed, you can't have none of these markings. So these are some scratches off the stem. But as you can see, normally I thin these down to six pair truss, just six. Now, as you can see, that bunch there, what I ate, touched it. You know, yeah, I don't know how many you got there. About 30 on there, really. <laughs> but there's a classic move where you can just put one truss in. Okay. That's one truss. And do they have to be ripe or? No. Well, not as far as I know, too, because normally when I see them at Malvern, they're normally just green and red. But this here is one complete truss. Right. Of maize. I mean, is that your normal variety you grab? Or yeah. I've tried them all over the I've years. I've never tried their macron. Macron, is it? I don't. It don't make a very good shape as a tomato. All right. Um. If he if he died like, I've got to grow what wins. Yeah. And I keep okay, forgetting this is show only this lot. Yeah. It? It's just show only. So I've got to grow the varieties what win. And it's either Dimitres at the moment, Meccano, or Meccano, and Maisie. So I only grow over one of them. Do you ever grow varieties. cherries at all? Cherry tomatoes? I have done, but the trouble is you've got to let them grow wild to get what you want. I've got to let them grow like this. All right. To get the cherries you want. If I grow them cordon, yeah. I'd get them, but the only trouble is I'd end up with oversized. They're going to go with 30 mil. When you let them go like this, you get smaller ones. So is it like a shallot? You have to pass through a ring or something? Yeah, you have to pass them through a 30 mil ring. All right. And on this side, you can see I'm growing the uh, long cucumbers for the, the long Before we go on to the cucumbers, Chris, you've yes. got something going to seed here. Or what are these? This is my leek stock for the coming season. And as you can see, I've shaved the heads. So this would be when a full... you say shaved the heads, what do you mean? Here's a prime example. That's an head full of seed. Yeah. Right. I shave all that off. What with? Fair scissors. Yeah. All right. And then that's what you get. All grass pips, and then come to the end of September, this will be soaked in a bleach solution or weak fungicide, and then they'll be started off in cell trays, and that's where you get. Well, don't that, don't that kill the, the actual plant or nothing? No, no, because you're only putting in a weak solution. Okay. You put like ten mil to a gallon. So is that just to get rid of any disease or? Well, anything? hopefully, you know, I ain't saying it will. But it, you get the uh, the bulb at the bottom nice and white. Yeah. And then you can see if there's any disease or anything. But uh, we'll have to see how these these come on. And what you say, we've got some cucumbers over there as well. Now, so yeah. Pulling the roof down. That one, <laughs> yeah, as you can see, I'd, if you don't prepare things properly and you do it on the spare of the moment, these are the things that happen. This is a proper wire, what's been put up properly. And that was just knocked up for quickness, oh, and it collapsed. broke because of the weight of the cucumbers. And as you can see, this was straight as a die, but because the wire snapped and it was touching the floor, I had to move it and put it on something so it's got a curving. But we have got a nice one that's forming here for the long class. What strain of that, Chris? This is a Polish one. I don't know what the actual strain is. It's just a Polish long Q. But it ain't no normal cucumber, I can put it that way. <laughs> and, and is that like watering these with just the watering can again? Yeah, all the feeds in the in this bed are... It's very rare, unless... I, I, the only thing with this gets feed a lot of is sulphate of ammonia. Now, with okay. cucumbers, it has to have a lot of nitrogen. Because I don't know if you've ever noticed, when you grow cucumbers, once they get to a certain point, the cucumbers start dying off. The reason is, there's not enough energy given to them cucumbers to feed it. Now, if you took sulphate of ammonia around the plant, within three days, these will be jet green. Jet green. You can either put sulphate of ammonia in a watering can, because it's dissolvable, but if you took an handful around the plant, these will be jet green within three days. Oh, the roots get it straight away, like that. Because it obviously dissolves. Give them a good soaking, and then 
And then if you get on water with these fish, because cucumbers are susceptible to like stem rot sometimes if you get them a bit wet, are they? I just water them like anything. And they never don't put no rot. pots around, nothing, like I don't get no stem rot. No. Right. The only thing I'm getting there is mildew. That's so because we're having moisture. These are going for the heavies, I mean, all along or what? Long, for the long class. Well, and now you said, you've still got a load of flowers on. Uh, that's taking the nutrients out of the plant that's in there. Don't you bother taking them out? Probably. I mean, this one, it, 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 I don't know what's happening here. But <laughs> it, it's gone thick and then it's still growing. But normally, these have all had the tops off. But yeah. these have reshooted again. I took all the flowers off these three times, and these are. Once you've stopped it and it, it's got to survive, so it's got to keep throwing something. Normally, I take them off, but like I said, I I have been that. And do you ever get? I mean, mine in my greenhouse at home have been obliterated now. Red spiders just wiped them out. You have to keep spraying, Nigel. Unfortunately. Right so, then, let's move on. So we've got one more bed to look at here, Chris, and uh, no introduction here. We've got some onions. What, what's the story behind these? Right, well, every year I grow my onions in here. This is brand new, fresh soil this year because I had some soil and it had, I first started, I had, say, three with white rot, but each year I got more and more and more. And the, last year it wiped me out completely, so I had no onions. So I bought some brand new soil in. Now there's a lot of soil in here, it's five ton, right, plus manure, there's about three ton of manure in here. So is this just normal topsoil you bought in or what? Well, it's clay mixed with uh, sand, sharp sand, and I have bought, <laughs> I've been, I, I, I'm probably contradicting myself now, but I bought some uh, recycled um, compost, compost yeah. that you buy from yeah. companies or builders, merchants, they're mixing with it. And uh, it's more clay based, but I have learned this year that I have got to water it more. But as you can see, it's been dry, I watered it for ages. But the more I dig down, the it's more. It's quite moisture underneath, it's dark, isn't it? Yeah, it's starting to, to bind you. So that's the clay. But the reason I really added sandy is because onions don't like to be in a wet environment. That's what causes botrytis. Yeah. I've had no white rot this year, which is a bonus. <clears throat> the reason the onions are as big as they normally are is because I reckon that's where the stem phyllium come from. This wasn't my own seed, I did bring it in. <clears throat> but from there, they have been very good all year, and that's where I think it, it spread it to my legs. That's what it does, the stem phyllium. It'll spread to one another, and then this is where my problems lied unfortunately. I think it's spread to my leeks. So what are you going to do with all these onions now then? <clears throat> well, we have been eating them. Um, Will you put any of these back down for seed or? This is where I'm having the conversation between better growers than myself uh, who have been at it years and asking their opinions and John Salisbury's opinion, as many experts as possible. And who better uh, to, um, in my field than when we are discussing whether I should or not? Nine out of ten, I'll probably say no. And you'll start with fresh stock next year? Yeah. It'll be back to my own seed, because I know I haven't got that problem with it. The seed's a couple of years old now, so I'll have to sow twice as many to get the numbers I want. Because these heavy onions here, what's left, <coughs> they was perfect. When these went wrong, it transferred to here, and then it, it went downwards. It's a shame, really, because they're, 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 you've got some... They might look big onions to some people, but to me, that's a very disappointment. They're normally way bigger than that. And if these hadn't have had that problem, I think I'd have been in for some uh, very big onions this year. But like I say, I'll have to try again next year. Well, that the bed brings this to her. To an end. Thanks very much, Chris, for inviting me down. And, no uh, problem. I'm sorry that you've had a, a such a bad year. And it, and say it's good here to invite me down because you could have said come back next year. But now, well, I was planning what, to. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like to do is actually come back next year, and hopefully you've got everything, more things up and running. Yeah, and, no uh, problem. But uh, 
so that's about it for this one thanks very much for watching i'll put a link to chris's channel down below and say he has done some quite detailed videos including the art breaking story about the carrot and that but uh, have a look anyway see you next time bye for now